The exciting game of traffic cars will help children to easily master double digit numbers and counting up to 50. The kids will learn to compare numbers, to feel confident around intervals and to find the closest numbers. The game also develops logic and strategic thinking, teaching kids to see the situation several steps ahead, to plan their actions and to foresee their competitors' moves. The game also has several sets of rules for kids of different ages. The cards with numbers have pictures of cars and all of them are different, not one the same. Here is where the number is placed and below the same number is pictured in the form of dots divided in tens. Thanks to these notations, children have an easier time finding their way in the structure of two-digit numbers. They won't confuse 13 and 31 as it often happens when children learn to count. And we'll see for themselves that a number made up of 1 and 9 is less than a number made up of 2 and 1. There are three different games in this box. First version is a memory game. The players take turns opening two cards. If the opened cards do not have adjacent numbers, such as 7 and 12, the player turns them over, and the turn passes to the next person. If the opened cards are adjacent, such as 9 and 10, the player continues to open the third card, fourth one, and keeps going until a wrong one is opened. In this case, the player keeps all the consecutive cards and turns the non-adjacent one over. The game is over when no more sequences can be created from the remaining cards. The player with the most cards wins. You can fine-tune the complexity of this game to your tastes. Just make sure that your set contains cards with consecutive numbers. Cards without numbers cannot be used in this game. The second game is called Took Over. Let's start by taking these special cards out of the stack. Divide the cards with numbers equally between the players. If there are extra cards, simply put them aside. Before the game starts, everyone takes six cards from their stacks. During the game, the cards are placed on the table in ascending order from left to right. The youngest player starts the game. He puts the starting card in the center from his stack on the table. Then he takes his turn, places one of six cards in his hands to the left or the right of the starting one, thus beginning to form a number row on the table. He continues to do this with an interval of three seconds. The player continues to place cards in a row until they are overtaken by a player from the left. What does overtaken mean? A player to the left can, at any moment, take over the turn by placing one or several cards that fit in the interval between the cards that are already on the table and the card which the active player put on the table last. As soon as a competitor sees an opportunity, he announces taking over and places his card or several cards between the relevant cards on the table. After that, the turn is interrupted. The players refill their hands to six cards, each from his own stack. Now is the takeover player's turn to go, and he places his cards to the left and the right of the number row on the table. The next clockwise player tries to overtake him. If the active player no longer has the necessary cards, greater than the farthest to the right, or smaller than the farthest to the left, he says, I pass. He refills his hand to six cards, and the turn goes to the next player. If, during his turn, the player places all of the cards from his hand on the table, the turn is also completed, and the next player starts his turn. If none of the players have the cards that can be used, everyone passes in turn, then the number row on a table is taken out of the game, and a new round begins. Just like in the beginning of the game, the player, whose turn it is, takes the first card out of the table stack. The game continues until one of the players uses up all the cards in his stack. This player becomes the winner. In the next game, called Rush Hour, the cars find themselves in a traffic jam. The player's objective is to get out of the jam ahead of everyone else. Shuffle the stack and place three cards on the table. These are the first cars in a three-lane traffic jam. The players will place all the other cars behind them. Deal 10 cards to each player and leave the rest of the stack out. You won't need it this time. 
Each player takes his cards without showing them to others. Then the players select one card for the turn and place it on the table face down. Once all the players are ready, the cards are opened all at once. Whoever has the smallest card places it in the traffic jam first. Next goes the player with the next smallest card and so on. In placing cards in the rows, the following two rules have to be observed. Ascending rule order. The card can only be placed in a row where it's greater than the previous one. 17 is less than 19, so it can't be placed in this row. Minimum difference rule. The card has to be placed in the row where its number is the closest to the previous card. 17 is closer to 15 than to 6, so the card can only be placed in the middle row. The object of the game is to collect as few penalty cards as possible. Penalty cards are given in two cases. First, if the traffic jam is too big. If the player's card has to be placed in a row which already has four cards, the player has to take this row's cards as a penalty, and his own card becomes the first one in the freed up row. Second, if the player's card is too small to place it into any row. In this case, the player takes any row of his choice as a penalty and places his card at the head of this row. The cards, collected by the player in the course of the game, are used to count the penalty points. Regular cards equal one penalty point, special cards two penalty points. The player with the least number of penalty points wins. Now let's look at these special cards, the trailer. It has a number and can be placed in rows according to the same rules as the regular cards, but it doesn't count as a separate car when the row length is calculated, since it's not by itself, it's attached to a car. Players can use this card, for example, even if the row already has four cars and won't be required to take the row. For clarity, the trailer card is placed on top of the previous card. The trailer can be attached to other trailers and any special cards and just like with the regular cards, it is placed on top. In this case, the special card under the trailer card deactivates. If the trailer is dealt to start a row, simply replace it with a different card. The ambulance. The ambulance surpasses the traffic jam and goes to the front of any row of a player's choice, moving all the other cards one spot back. If this creates more than four cars in a row, the player with an ambulance card takes the row as a penalty. In this case, his ambulance starts a new row. Any card can be placed after it. It remains a player's choice whether to place a card after the ambulance or into any other applicable row. The minimum difference rule doesn't apply in this case as the ambulance has no number. Whoever selected the ambulance for his turn goes first. If two players selected ambulance for their turn and want to place it in the same spot, the cards are placed one on top of the other. If this creates a massive traffic jam, the penalty cards are taken by the older player. The police car can be placed at the end of any row of a player's choice. The police provides an escort for the next car. It can be followed by a card with any number, however small it is. It remains up to the player to place his card after the police or in any other applicable row, as the minimum difference rule doesn't apply in this case. The police card goes ahead of everyone else except the ambulance. If two players selected police for their turn and want to place it in the same spot, the cards are placed one on top of the other. The tow truck is the last of the cards in a turn. It can be placed at the end of any row. After the player places it in a row, the tow truck loads the previous car on itself. The car card is placed on top of the tow truck. And both of these cards now count as one when the massive traffic jam is calculated. In subsequent turns, any player can place his card on the spot freed up by the tow truck, as long as it fits in the interval between the neighboring cards. But even if the spot remains unoccupied, it will still be counted in the massive traffic jam. If there are two or more cards placed on top of each other in front of the tow truck, it can be with a trailer, another tow truck with a loaded car, two ambulances or police cars that took their turn simultaneously, the tow truck loads all of the cards in front of it. If the tow truck ends up as a fifth card in the row, then it loads the preceding car first, 
and then the player takes the rest of the cards as a penalty, while the car loaded on the tow truck moves to the beginning of the row. The game can be simplified somewhat depending on the player's age and counting skills. Playing with cards up to 10, or 20, or 30. Dealing 5 cards to each player instead of 10. The number of rows can be reduced to 2. Going in turns with each player selecting a card from his stack and putting it into any appropriate row. Playing without special cards. Simply take them out of the stack. Playing without the massive traffic jam rule, which means that rows can be of any length. Playing without penalties for the two small cards. The small cards can be placed in the beginning of the traffic jams as well. And that's it, have fun learning and wash out on the roads.